So her dead mom came to visit her, and she didn't recognize her. Good morning, my friends. It is I, John, here in the studio, drinking my fabulous mug of coffee. Um, I got a, a a comment that I wanted to want to come on and do. It's a fairly long one, but it it it's long because it tells a story. Um, but there is something um, that I uh, I want to comment on or, or address at the end of it. So let me just read the read the comment. And um, then we'll dive into my thoughts. I have weird dreams. My mother came to me in a dream on the day she died. I didn't really like the woman, but she came to me asking for forgiveness. I didn't know who she was as she appeared as a beautiful girl of 16. There was nothing beautiful about my mother. Long waist, length, dark hair, Long dress, her hair and dress moving in the breeze. She was floating in the air. I was on the ground looking upwards. In the end, I just said, I don't know who you are. She said, I am your mother, in a familiar voice. I just told her that there's nothing to forgive, no pain, and I have moved on. I also know in my dreams that people I have known have passed on. Recently, I saw an actor on a new TV Star Wars show, who was very happy, very loving, and I felt very uneasy seeing him as I felt death around him. He died soon after. Ray Stevenson. I find these dreams very disturbing, and I don't want them. Well, so let's talk about, first of all, the mother coming. Um, it's often said in, in near-death experiences, when you cross over, you go to uh, the moment in your life where you are most free and most authentically yourself. Uh, many people go back to their 30s. You know, you see them as a much younger person, thin, healthy. Um, a beautiful young girl of 16 was probably uh, when she still had an, an innocence that she hadn't lost yet. And so she went back to the, her authentic self. The world is full of beliefs and experiences, and those beliefs and experiences give us subconscious belief, which makes us take actions which makes us mad, which makes us frustrated. You know, your story comes to the point of seeing this beautiful girl at 16. Who knows what happened to her at 17? Who knows what turned her bitter? You know, there could have been, you know, trauma and abuse and things that was never were never spoken. Um, so she became the bitter person that you don't like. In here you said there was nothing beautiful about my mother. There was everything beautiful about your mother. Because the well, that beautiful girl, which the sentence before you called her beautiful girl of 16, that was your mother. The, the woman that you experienced in life was not your mother. That was the traumas and the events that that 16 girl had to live 16 year old girl had to live through. That 16 year old girl had to go through an experience that made her unloving, made her uncaring, and made her unbeautiful in your eyes. But what you saw floating above you in that dream was your mother in all of her beauty, in all of her wonderful glory, in her authentic nature, which is all a part of God. And to judge my mother as horrible and terrible, my father was not a kind man, but I recognized the fact that he was an abused man, an abused boy. And, and so he did the best he could with what he knew. And it comes down to you coming to that space of realizing that that beautiful girl is your mother. And that beautiful girl, you know, was a, a young girl prior to the things that made her not beautiful. And for her to come back and visit you afterwards as her authentic self, asking for forgiveness, she's asking for forgiveness for the her actions taken out of those fears and those anxieties and those traumas. And so it really it comes down to recognize that beautiful girl of 16, not only as your mother, but also as an extension of you. You know, your mother birthed you. No matter what you, happened in your emotional experience with your mother in life, you know, that, that she's a part of God, too, and experiencing 
the the flawed reality that we all live through, which is why we're here, is to experience those experiences. And so you know, don't negate when someone comes to you, especially when they come to you looking like their authentic self, because they're showing you who they are. They're showing you they're not the person that had that experience with you in life. They're showing you that, look, this is who I really am. And I'm sorry that you experienced this, the parts of me that wasn't who I really am. So that's really what that's about. You also said something about Ray Stevenson, who, for those of you who don't know, yes, he was in the new um, Ahsoka Tano series. He was also in the Thor movies. Um, in the Thor movies, he was the Thor's friend with the big red beard. Um, <laughs> um, yes, I'm a Star Wars and a superhero movie kind of guy. Um, you end this v- comment by saying, I find these dreams very disturbing and I do not want them. You find the dreams very disturbing, but you believe you have them, right? Because you do. Well, if it's something you don't want, you always have the power to say, I'm, I'm not doing that. I'm closing that off. But before you do that, I would release the concept of disturbing because the beautiful 16-year-old girl came to you to make amends. Now, on the other side, they don't need your forgiveness. They're coming here to help you to have you let go of the anger and the angst and the struggles with the experience because they're helping you break free of it. They don't need forgiveness on the other side. They're in the pure essence of love. They're in God. They're home. You're the one who's away and struggling in the wilderness, and they're showing you you're making it hard by focusing on the bad things I did to you in life. Please forgive me so that you can propel forward. Now, I find these dreams very disturbing and I don't want them. You, whatever you ask in God's name is granted if you have faith. I am no longer having these sorts of dreams. Can be the choice you make. But I would, if it was me, I would not make that declaration. I would say, I would see with clarity the messages they're delivering to me. Because I don't think you're seeing it in in clarity, the message they're delivering to you, because I think it really is recognizing the fact that they're on the other side. Now, knowing Ray Stevenson was going to die, right, it's an an interesting um, perspective. But when you think of the idea of this world just being an illusion of belief, it just means he was leaving the illusion. It means he was transcending into something different, something something bigger he, to a bigger awareness he was going to everyone who's in the near death experience tells you they don't want to come back because it's better there than it is here right so when you f- see somebody who is going to cross over recognize that they're going to someplace beautiful they're going to someplace wonderful but when you think of it as disturbing it's because you you're you're thinking of death as a as a negative And the only place that death is a negative is in the finite physical world because it's it's the one thing that we're, we're all afraid of is the fear of death, right? But what does the Bible say? Though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, the shadow of death, the illusion of it, 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 we live eternally. And the only thing that's happening is they're leaving the physical reality and going to back to the oneness of God. And so I would, I would look more into the message that you're being given in these moments. Because it, it, if they've crossed over or are crossing over, it's a message for you because you're the one staying behind. So that's my thought on this. You guys have a great day, and I'll talk to you soon. See ya. Bye.